Well, hello, my name is Drew Gaba. This is Timothy Graham. Graham. And <laughs> oh, why are you introducing us? Because he said to introduce me. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we've created a smart station. So our smart station uh, has two main functions, one of entertainment and one of environmental sensing. So right now, using a Bluetooth module, we're able to stream music from a phone over to our system and play it through these wired uh, speakers. And so the phone is over here. Okay. Yep. Play it through iTunes. We have three main screens. So first we can go to the music screen and it hosts different options for skipping tracks, uh, pausing and raising, lowering the volume. But what you'll also notice is when I increase the volume of the speaker, there's a light show that happens. I can do things like pause the music and play it and so forth. The way that the light show works is primarily through a rudimentary beat detection and uh, through the different amplitude sensing of the speakers through this mic that's wired back into the main housing. I see. So this is so that's why I'm beginning a little bit of trigger off my voice and your voice on the lights. Right, also. and that's why the volume of the speakers is necessary to be at a certain point in mm -hmm. order for it to have the right binning that we've had in our code. Okay. So we can have music playing in the background. And we'll just lower the volume through music. So now when we go back through our main screen, now we can look at the environmental sentencing aspect of it. So first we have the ability to go and to a setting screen. When you're in the settings screen, you're able to showcase every sensor along with color, which represents the color that will be uh, displayed on graphing, and finally trigger high and trigger low. These values are initially set to values that we think are appropriate, but have the ability to be changed through the user interface of the keypad. And when they're displayed like that, uh, in the graphing setting, in the graphing screen, you're able to see thresholds, and once you're outside of these ranges, an alert would show. So let's say we go towards the microphone. So the microphone power. Uh, if we go back and we go to the graphing screen, now you see the green light showing that we are in a, a stable state. The status symbol there is also showing stable. Values are being shown. But as I turn the volume up on the... You'll notice that we went outside the range and the light turned red. And so that indicates that we're outside of our given threshold, which is showcased on the, by the red line. Go back up in amplitude again. And this can be done through all the different sensors. So as another example, if we go back into our settings screen, we can toggle to, let's say, X, uh, acceleration. So the sensors that are hosted here are a number of sensors. We have acceleration in the X, Y, Z uh, frames. We have temperature and humidity, and we have luminosity and the microphone power. So for X acceleration, we have, again, the same graph. And then if you decide to start shaking the table, you're gonna start seeing a change in amplitude. And the light turned red. Right, yep. and that's outside the stable ranges that have been defined. Yeah, so the accelerometer is set to read between uh, plus or minus two Gs because we figured if you're reading outside of that with a box on a table, you have bigger problems in life. Um, so all the sensors actually communicate, except for the microphone, communicate through the ITC protocol and are all hosted on the exact same bus. So our PIC32 will actually talk to each of the sensors in sequence We'll uh, pull their data, save them, and we actually store 270 data points and plot that over time. Mm -hmm. and, and is the music being played back through the pick? Is it, or is it... So the music set up uh, as an A2DP sync, so the, the roving networks RN52 Bluetooth audio module on board, which is configured over UART through the pick. Um, it essentially acts as an A2DP sync with also a serial port pro uh, profile, so you can control music from your phone and send control signals the other way, causing the phone to pause, uh, go forward, back. Um, and then the A2DP sync is just like a you know, high fidelity, 
unidirectional audio blast um, to the Roving Networks device, which uh, has direct speaker lines from the module, okay. so not routed through the phone. Yeah. yeah. So overall, we have environmental sensing, a entertainment feature hosted through uh, various different protocols and packages, including UART, uh, I squared C, all in a very tight package enclosure um, with a host of different peripherals, including the TFT screen, keypad, uh, speakers, etc. Thank you. Mm -hmm.